how do I play this? On this episode, we have ninjas. Now the first thing I want to cover in this video is what I like to call the Hanzo plus 5 play. Uh, this is basically the main way of the deck getting started. This is kind of usually what you'll do if you start with a Hanzo in your hand, since it's your main monster uh, in the main deck to really get things going. So it's a really easy play to do, and all you need to set it up is one Hanzo. That is it. So if you start with a Hanzo in your hand, the first thing you want to do is normal summon the Hanzo. Now with the effect of that Hanzo, you get to search Ninjutsu Art card. You're going to want to search Ninjutsu Art of Duplication. Now you're usually going to have other back row to keep Hanzo alive and help uh, this play go through. So just keep that in mind. Now once it gets to your opponent's end phase, you're going to want to use the effect of your duplication. This is going to allow us to tribute off our Hanzo and special summon another Hanzo from our deck. Now when Hanzo is flip summoned or special summoned, we get to search a ninja monster from our deck. So that allows us to add Twilight Ninja Getsuga the Shogun to our hand. Then it comes to our turn, we contribute one ninja monster for Getsuga summon, so we tribute this Hanzo, summon Getsuga, this starts floating. We can use the effect of our Getsuga, switching him to defense, targeting both our Hanzos to special summon them, both their effects activate, and you're going to want to search Earth Armor Ninja and another Getsuga. And that right there is plussing five cards off of one Hanzo. We started with one Hanzo, we're ending with one, two Hanzos, Getsuga three, Floating Duplication 4, another Getsuga 5, and Earth Armor 6. So we went from 1 to 6 cards, which is plusing 5. Now you might be wondering um, why I'm counting the Floating Duplication, considering that it's technically dead, but we have lots of Magic Plant as in an Alchemy to help it essentially turn into a Pot of Greed, so it's never truly dead. Now, the reason you want to be searching specifically Earth Armor Ninja and Getsuga is because Earth Armor Ninja is a Cyber Dragon, essentially meaning that you can Special Summon it if you have no monsters and your opponent does, and then of course you can tribute the one ninja monster, the Earth Armor, to normal summon the Getsuga. And then you can use the Getsuga's effect to bring back both Hanzos again and continue your searches and plays. So that's the reason you usually want to search these the first time you get that off. Now Getsuga has a 3k ass and of course you're going to be making a rank 4. And you can even have some spells and traps still left behind. And of course we drew a card for our turn as well. So that could also be a spell and trap to help keep this alive so we can make another rank 4 next turn. That's kind of how... Uh, one of the main engines in the deck works is just by that particular play. Now one thing you got to keep in mind when doing this play is that you cannot chain duplication to anything. It needs to be chain link 1 so that Hanzo doesn't miss timing for his effect. His effect is when he is flip summoned or special summoned, not an if. Basically meaning that if he doesn't come out from this on chain link 1, he will miss timing and you will not get the search for the Getsuga. Now the next thing I want to cover is a very simple and very well known interruptive play. In fact, it's such a good play that quite a few people when building decks actually tech in Hanzos and Super Transformations just to be able to make this play for other monsters in their deck. It's such a powerful play and very easy to set up. So making a Super Transformation play is very easy to do. You want to normal summon Hanzo whenever you get him and search out your ninjutsu art of Super Transformation and set it. Now this makes our white dragon ninjas summonable and live in our deck. If you use it at the wrong time or willy nilly just trying to get out a white dragon just because you're all excited. Now the key to making this so powerful is to know your opponent's deck and know exactly when to interrupt them during their combos. Now with something like Harpies or something like Blackwings, especially Blackwings, just using this on the monster that they initially normal summon will pretty much stop their entire turn if they don't have any other Blackwings out, and usually they won't, since they need a Blackwing out to special summon other stuff. Same thing with Harpies, if you generally interrupt their normal summon, you will stop their entire turn. And there are a lot of decks out there that are like that, where if you interrupt their normal summon, they simply can't do too much. They need that normal summon to get the ball rolling. So in those cases, um, it is very effective to just super transformation away the first thing they summon. But a lot of decks, you need to know exactly when to stop them. Something like a Resonator Red Dragon Archfiend generic Synchro deck, or something like Synchrons or a Quick Draw Quasar deck. Against decks like those, it's generally more effective to wait until they've used up their normal summon and wait until they special summon one or two monsters. And then once they have their field set up to the point where 
you know there's not a whole lot engraved they can bring out, and they have a couple non-tuners and a tuner, or a couple tuners and a non-tuner, you generally want a super transformation away that non-tuner to keep them with just tuners, or the tuner that will leave them with just non-tuners, so that they can't actually make any more synchro plays. That's generally the best way to interrupt combo decks like that, is to just wait until they have that one-of-a-kind tuner or non-tuner, and just get rid of it, clear it off the board, uh, if they don't have anything else to summon back of that particular kind. But a lot of decks can easily deal with one transformation play, but if you time it right, it will have the most impact, and it will be so much more powerful than just sending away the first thing they summon. So always make sure to time it right, make sure you know the deck you're playing against, and if you don't, if it's brand new to you, then don't use it right away. Just keep calm, try to time it just right, figure out what their tactics are, and then try to use it at the right time. But don't get all gung-ho with it, because the Super Transformation play can be very underwhelming if you use it just straight off the bat with no particular thought into it. But anyway, like I said, once they have something that you feel is a sufficient target and you know it's the right time, go ahead and activate the Super Transformation, target your Hanzo and their monster, you send both to Grave, and you Special Summon your White Dragon Ninja. Now, White Dragon Ninja has a very good passive effect that basically states your Spurn Trap cards cannot be destroyed by card effects. Now this is a very useful effect for other plays which I'm about to show you. Keep in mind that the two monsters have to go to the graveyard in order for Super Transformation to count both their levels. Another great thing to do with this particular play is if you have Vanity's Emptiness for back row. Now the play would go exactly the same except you would be setting the Vanities along with the Super Transformation. And the way you want to order this particular chain when you're ready to do this, you want to make sure you activate the Vanities first, then you can chain the Super Transformation and resolve that before Vanities resolves. So you can still special summon send these both away, bring out the white dragon, then this resolves and this protects this, basically putting your opponent in a slight lock. The next thing I'm going to go over is the Shingetsu lock. Shingetsu has a passive effect that basically states no other ninja monsters can be targeted for attacks or card effects. And if you have out two of them, since it doesn't say no other ninja monsters except Shingetsu, it says except this one, then that basically means having two of them will make it so that no ninja monsters can be targeted for attacks or card effects. A lot of decks will only really run maybe one or two outs at most to really get past this particular lock, which makes it so powerful. If they don't have any way to really dig for those outs before you go for game or search those outs, then there's very little chance they're going to draw into it, basically making this lock a game winner. Uh, at least 60% of the time you put it on. Now this is not a lock that I personally rely on most of the time, I generally don't even go for it, um, but it is a very easy thing to set up in the deck. Now one of my favorite ways to put this on in the deck is a very simple way, which is having yourself a Getsuga out, which is, well, <laughs> no big deal on the deck, and then having a duplication set. Now this is quite an easy thing to set up, but it is something that I often find my deck just giving me. It's just a situation I get in a lot of the time. And a lot of you probably guessed it, you just go duplication, tribute off the Getsuga, that lets you bring out eight levels worth of ninjas, two level fours, right there you have the lock. Now this isn't the ideal way to do it in my opinion, because both of these Shingetsus will be connected to this duplication basically meaning that if the duplication goes away, these will be destroyed. However, this still isn't a bad way to do it, it's one of my favorite ways because it actually lets you do it on your opponent's turn, basically meaning that your opponent is probably going to try to set up for the Getsuga, you know, they're going to go, okay, I have to get over 3k, you know, in terms of a defense, that's going to be fine, you know, they're, they're overlay for a lightning or something, you know, or they just bring out a big beat stick. Then as soon as they go battle phase, you can just swap that stuff out for two Shingetsus and, well, they can't attack now, and if they try to go main phase 2 and make a rank 4, well, if it targets, it won't mean shit. So I do like the duplication way of doing this because it actually lets you just sort of uh, shut down your opponent's hopes. You know, they set up to deal with this type of a board, but then they end up having to deal with this type of a board, and it's just completely different from what they expected, and they're just not set up for it and generally have to pass. Now, there are a lot of ways to put on the Shingetsu lock in the deck. Uh, one way to do it is if you have both of these engraved, you can bring them back with a Getsuga, of course. Now, if you actually have the Getsuga survivor turn and it comes back to your turn and you have one of these engraved along with the Hanzo, you can switch Getsuga to attack mode, use this effect, targeting yourself a Hanzo and Shingetsu engraved, switching him to defense to special summon both. Hanzo's effect, the second Shingetsu, Normal summon it, and there you go, you have it. That's usually a better way to do it, because you don't have them attached to the duplication.
a situation that I find myself in a lot if I don't keep track of it. Now lately I've been very good about keeping track of it so it's not an issue for me. This deck searches monsters like fucking crazy. Usually you'll get Suga survives and that allows you to bring out two Hanzos each turn. Those Hanzos let you get two searches for monsters. So you can keep monsters coming out of your deck to your hand like absolutely crazy. Now Upstart Golden Ninja lets you send one trap card from your hand to the grave to special level 4 lower ninja from your deck. As I mentioned, searching monsters is incredibly easy with the two Hanzos constantly being special summoned by Getsuga. So you want to make sure that you do not take all of the level 4s out of your deck. Once you have a few in your hand, you don't need to be searching anymore. Generally, I try to leave at least two level 4s in the deck. You're also going to be drawing level 4s every so often with the draw phases. So you really want to make sure you don't search too much. Only search what you really need. Um, very few times do you want to search those last two out of your deck. In our hearts, this is what matters. Let's say you start out with a hand like this. Two Fiendish Chains, Super Transformation, Van East Duplication, and a Ninja Monster, right? Let's say you're going second, for example. It may be incredibly tempting to just set five, set a monster and pass. You've now clogged your back row. You have five continuous trap cards in your back row, and there is no way of getting rid of them short of making a rank four like a Castell or Diamond Die to get rid of your own back row, which is an incredibly subpar play. It is just not something you ever want to be doing. I know it may seem obvious to a lot of people out there, well, duh, Craig, I'm not going to be a fucking idiot if I get a hand like that. I'm going to be cautious. I'm not just going to fuck my back row space up. I get that. But sometimes in the heat of the moment, you can forget. So all I'm saying is be incredibly aware of your back row space. Be aware of what you have set that is continuous, what can be cleared and what can't be cleared. Always leave at least one back row space for your magic planters and your alchemies. Always try to leave it for your soul charges, your rollers, anything else that needs to be activated. Now, of course, if you set five back row, three of those are continuous and two of them are stuff that reacts, like a bottomless and a solemn warning, that's fine because those, that bottomless and solemn warning is most likely going to get used in an instant, so you don't have to worry too much about that. But when it does come to hands like this, you need to resist. Don't let it go to your head and just be really careful because you have so many continuous trap cards in the deck. You really do. You know, on top of all of those, you have another four, right? That's nine continuous trap cards in total, all incredibly useful, five of them searchable. So it does make it tempting sometimes to just be setting a bunch of powerful back row, but do not clog your back row space by mistake. It is something that can happen, it's a very common issue, I see it a lot of the time when I see other people playing ninjas. So just be careful is all I'm saying. Be cautious, be aware. Now the last thing I want to cover before we go to test hands is keeping information. Now this is again something obvious to a lot of competitive players, but I cannot stress how important that is in this deck. I really can't. This is not threatening back row. It simply isn't very threatening to your opponent. Even if you manage to get off the Starlight Road, this is not going to be threatening. If they knew what these cards were, they would be making even more powerful plays. Bluffing is one of the most important things you can do in Yu-Gi-Oh. You're meant to be conniving. You're, you're meant... This is a fucking ninja deck. If, if anything, you're meant to be secretive. You're meant to keep in the shadows. You need to bluff your ass off sometimes. Now, most of the time, you're going to have at least two or three interruptive plays during your opponent's turn, but very occasionally, you start with a hand like this. A lot of people would either set these two or set these three and keep that in hand. In my opinion, setting stuff like this, setting the extra spell cards, even if you don't necessarily want to lose them, is never a bad idea because it, it puts your opponent under a lot of pressure, if, especially if they know what you're playing. They know what powerful interruptive plays that you have. They, they know you have a lot of effect negation and summon negation. So if you have four set back row and a ninja monster that makes super transformation live, they're going to be quite scared. They're going to be very conservative. They're not going to be massively brave with any of their plays. Now what I mean by keeping information basically means do not use things until the very last moment that you think they're usable. For example, if they just normal summon a monster that has 1900 attack, Hanzo has 18, don't use it when they attempt to go into battle phase. Don't use it at the beginning of battle phase. Use it at the last possible moment upon attack declaration. Then use it. Because now they're in the battle phase. If you would have used that at the end of main phase when they attempt to go into battle phase, that would have kept them in their main phase since the game state has now changed and they could have done more things before they go into battle phase. So keeping that last piece of information 
right until the very end makes it an incredibly powerful bluff, and that is something that you cannot underestimate in a deck like this. Keep information to yourself. Do not reveal things. If you have bad back row, don't show them that. Be confident and make sure you don't reveal things before it is necessary. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do a few test hands. Now, it's going to be a little tricky to do with this deck because we kind of have to imagine our opponent's field and what they may have and what back row of ours gets used and it's very difficult to do. With Fluffles, it was quite easy, but with Ninjas, it's going to be quite a difficult thing to do. So we're going to start with five cards. We're going to see what we can set up in terms of our first board and then we're going to do a follow-up turn um, just sort of imagining uh, what may or may not happen and what we can do. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we get for our first hand. So, first card, duplication. Second card, white dragon, that is not good. Uh, third card, air armor. Fourth card, Shingetsu. Okay, already I can tell you way too many monsters. And finally, a Hanzo. So that is not a particularly great starting hand. Uh, luckily, we did get the Hanzo, so we can semi try to save ourselves. So, uh, let's go ahead and normal summon the Hanzo. Use its effect to search for Notebook, right there. Uh, use Notebook and activate its effect, pitching the White Dragon Ninja to the graveyard to set Alchemy from our deck. There it is. And let's see if we can potentially dig for some trap cards. Maybe we can try to uh, save this hand a little bit. Ideally, we would like to draw uh, two trap cards off of this, preferably powerful ones and uh, see if we can make this board somewhat decent. As of right now, we're not looking too great. We have no real interruptive plays, which is not very good. Uh, but sometimes it happens. Sometimes you just, you brick. Any, any deck can brick. And that hand, I would consider somewhat a brick. It's very close to being not really unplayable, but the worst possible hand. It, it is close to that. So let's go ahead and see what we get from this alchemy. So, alchemy will destroy our notebook, and we draw two. A warning, that is a very powerful trap card. And an Earth Armor Ninja. Okay, so, that Earth Armor Ninja may appear like a bad draw, and but, because we now have the Earth Armor Ninja, all we need is a Getsuga, and since we have the duplication, which we're gonna be setting, we can actually search that quite easily. So we're going to set warning and duplication, obviously. And we'll see what happens. Now, if they twin twist it right away, that would really suck. Um, but hey, what can you do about it? But although I like being a pessimist, I'll be a pessimist optimist right now. <laughs> so uh, the warning is obviously going to get used. So let's just go ahead and just say that gets used up. And like I said, this is kind of difficult to play out because we have to imagine quite a bit of the gameplay. So that's obviously it's a warning that was gonna get used. And let's go ahead and use duplication. Tribute off our Hanzo to special our Hanzo. Okay. Well, there we go. Hanzo's effect. Search ourselves against Suga. Uh, now this Hanzo is most likely gonna get run over. Um, I can't imagine it will survive. Unless you're playing, like I mentioned earlier, uh, something like Black Wings or Harpies where they're just their turn ends if they're normal someone gets stopped, which makes warning really, really good against decks like those. Um, we also could imagine we're playing against a Pendulum deck and we just fucked the Pendulum Summon big time, but let's go ahead and imagine our Hanzo gets run over, and this is now floating. So, we, we have plays, but not great plays. I mean, generally you want to start with way more back row than we did. Uh, we started two monsters too many. So, draw our card, and oh, I dropped it. Bottomless, okay, that's not awful. Uh, so we at least have another trap card for interruptive plays, so. Uh, special summon the Earth Armor, tribute it, normal summon the Getsuga, Getsuga effect, target both our Hanzos, special summon them, and we get two search that, that, and we can make a rank four and have a bottomless. So, that's not terrible, but that is a less than average hand. It is just, uh, I would have said we started bad, in my opinion. 
Um, I would call what we started with a bad hand in ninjas. I wouldn't call it okay or even mediocre. So yeah, that's that hand. Not a whole lot going on with it, but we can still make plays of advance our game stay and uh, we can still at least do something. Okay, let's see what kind of hand we get. Duplication. White Dragon, uh, uh, every time that hurts so bad. Uh, Starlight Road, Getsuga, and a second White Dragon. No. Alright, so let's see what kind of hand we get. Magic Planter, Rhoda, Vanities. Already that's not a terrible hand because we can search the Hanzo and get the Vanities and uh, White Dragon Lock. Duplication, and a Hanzo, okay. Kinda wish that Hanzo was a trap card, but that's okay. So this isn't a terrible hand. I would definitely say this is way better than our previous hands. So we have a few options here. Personally, um, I just save the rotor because like I said, I generally tend to set spells for bluffs. So I would normal summon the Hanzo and use this effect to search for super transformation. If I can find it. There we go. They're right next to each other in the deck. Alright. And we have some back rotor set. So we're obviously going to be setting these three. Um, I would also set these two because I like to bluff my face off. So let's go ahead and imagine we're setting those. So there's set five with a Hanzo and pass turn. Now Hanzo set five is generally the best starting hand with this uh, this deck. Of course, usually when you say best starting hand, you refer to the ideal situation as in five back row. But we have three back row, and we have an incredibly powerful lock we can potentially put on. So. Pass to our opponent. Now, in the ideal world, we would be able to uh, go vanities when they try to do something that was special. They're probably going to chain a twin twisters if they have one. Um, now, of course, you're going to want your opponent to have a monster on board, so you can chain to your own vanities with. If I can find it, there it is. Super transformation. Target this. Target their monster, and send both to grave. Special summon a white dragon from deck. And now we have a pretty. Sorry, my uh, camera died randomly. It, yeah, it kind of sucks. But uh, it kept dying throughout all that hand testing. It was just low on battery. I had to keep go charging it. And then the memory was full, so I had to go and unload video and come back. And yeah, it was a nightmare. But uh, in case you're wondering, my next card was a Hanzo. And what I probably would have done from there is use the Rota to search an upstart golden ninja, so I had kind of a one card play if I'd drawn a trap card at any point. And then I would have normaled the Hanzo and either searched uh, Ninjutsu Art of Freezing or Alchemy um, for some follow-up plays with uh, the Super Transformation, just in case my uh, my lock got broken with the White Dragon and Vanities. But anyway, not a terrible hand. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please let me know in the comments below. I love having discussions with you guys, although oddly enough, none of you seem to like commenting on my actual card discussion videos, which is weird. Thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you want to check out the previous episode I did in this series, which was a How Do I Play This episode on Fluffles, you can check that out here. You can also just check out my channel in general if you want to click on my face, I'll leave an annotation there. Thank you so much for watching, take care, do along.